welcome to my channel and this surprise video. I had no intention of filming today. This was like a spur of the moment idea that I had. If you don't already know, I interviewed with Casey Morris for her CEO teacher podcast. It was an amazing experience and quite honestly a dream come true. So for everyone that suggested for her to interview me when she was looking for teacherpreneurs that are still in the classroom full time, I just want to say thank you so much. It was so exciting and I still have some of that like leftover energy and I wanted to share a little bit more. So Casey has a quiz that you can take to find out what kind of teacherpreneur you are. It's kind of like um, a Cosmo or Buzzfeed quiz. And I of course got the purposeful perfectionist, which could that be any more accurate? So in true perfectionist fashion, I overprepared for the interview. Now we were talking about just what it's like to be a full-time teacher and a teacherpreneur and even a teacher mom. And how does that actually look? And how do you get it all done? Being a full-time teacher and teacherpreneur at the same time is this beautiful, wonderful, special thing where you are in the classroom so you know precisely what teachers need and what students need and what works so you have this never-ending wealth of inspiration. What can be frustrating though is this perceived lack of time. Like if you didn't have to teach Monday through Friday, you would have all this time to create things for teachers. It ends up being like this weird catch-22. You probably wouldn't have as many ideas but you'd have time to create endlessly. So on the podcast, I shared two time-saving tips for full-time teacher, teacherpreneurs, and I wanted to share the rest because I have seven. The first one that I shared was batch lesson planning, and that's because if you're a teacher teaching full-time, your teaching job comes before being a teacherpreneur. Taking care of your students is the priority. So when I started batch lesson planning, that's what freed up my time on nights and weekends that allowed me to pursue being a teacherpreneur. It's so weird to think about it back then because back then it was a hobby versus being a business now. But still, same idea. Because I was able to batch my lesson planning and get everything done within the school day, I was able to come home and do what I wanted. So I'm not gonna go into any more detail because I already have a whole blog post and video all about batch lesson planning that I will have linked below. The second tip that I shared was having a power hour or simply setting a timer. Back in the winter time, pre-COVID, I was able to have a power hour on Saturday and Sunday mornings. So I got up at, it may not have been five o'clock, it might've been more like 5.30, but that was like my normal wake up time anyway, was five o'clock. So on Monday, I had no problem getting out of bed. That was the big perk. So I would get up on Saturday and Sunday early and that was before my husband woke up, before my son woke up, because my son was waking up seven on the weekends if we were lucky, it was usually somewhere around 6.30 because that's when we got him up to go to grandma's house. So having that time where I was uninterrupted with the exception of the cats, which you can't really control that, I was able to focus so much better. And now getting up early in the morning works for me because I'm a morning person. But if you're looking for when can I do my power hour, you wanna think about what time are you most productive and you want to set intentions for that time to make sure that you're gonna sit down and get right to work and know what you're doing and set a timer and set your phone on do not disturb, which if it's early in the morning, you probably won't have to worry about. Basically what happens is because you know you have a set amount of time to work on something, you're able to focus on it so much better and more likely to get it done. The example that I used on the podcast was if your in-laws are coming to visit and you have 20 minutes to clean your house, you get your house clean in 20 minutes. Any other time it could take hours. Having that deadline, even if it's self-imposed, is a huge help and time saver. My third tip is using brain dumps and power lists. Now I talked about this in terms of using them for teachers. Um, essentially a brain dump is just a way to clear your mind because your mind is really not meant to hold on to ideas for such a long period of time. When you write everything out, you have a record of your ideas so that you can kind of start focusing on some other things. A power list, when I mentioned it for teachers, it's a short to-do list. So it's the list of your must-do items. And when we talk about teaching in the classroom, we want no more than three or four tasks. When we're teaching, it seems like we have all day to get these things done, so four tasks is very doable. Now, if we're talking about we're working on the weeknight on our business, we want to try and limit it to one or two tasks, and it's up to you, because you know how long it's gonna take you to do something, but it's usually best to settle on one big goal to accomplish 
for the evening. If it's weekends, you can give yourself a little bit more. The fourth tip is to create templates for your resources. Let's say you're creating task cards. You could create task cards for lots of different topics. You don't have to do it just one time and one time only. So when you create task cards for the first time, just create a template of how you want your cards to look. Once you have that template done and set, you can create lots of task cards and you're starting not from scratch, but from the template. So it makes it go a lot faster. Everything's already laid out. You're not fiddling around with margins or anything like that. You're just putting in your problems and before you know it, you're done. The same thing can be done for interactive notebook pages, foldables, mazes, pretty much everything. My sixth tip is to pay attention to how you're feeling. So I felt like making this video. This very easily could have been a blog post, but I felt like making a video, so here I am. Now, if I had tried to sit down and write out a blog post when I wasn't really in like a blog post mood, it wouldn't have helped because I would have been fighting myself to get it done. Try keeping a list of things that you can do when you're feeling high energy, low energy, so that you have like a bank of ideas for those times when you want to get something done, but maybe you're not feeling 100% yourself. Any big projects that require a lot of focus, if I'm not in the mood for them, it's not going to go well. So it's better if I'm doing something like watching Netflix and creating pins or something. Tip number six is to draft anything that you're writing in Google Docs. Now this could apply to emails, to social media posts, and to blog posts. One thing that's helpful about this is if I'm feeling inspired and I have my phone, I could do it on my phone, I could do it on my iPad. Most likely though, I'll be sitting down at my computer to do this. And what makes a difference here is that I'm not distracted by anything else. I'm just focused on the writing and I'm able to get it done a lot faster. Um, but if I were to go directly into WordPress and start drafting out my post, I get distracted by fixing the headers, adding in links, um, adding in images, other things like that. So if you're able to just focus on writing, it goes faster. I also much prefer how Google Docs edits anything I write, any misspellings, any grammar issues. I feel like it catches a lot more than Microsoft Word does. My final tip is to create good habits. Now, I don't want to act like I have everything together all the time. I'm working on my habits right now more than anything else. I'm just going to be really honest about this one. Um, I filmed a video talking about it. I don't feel like editing it. I don't know that it will ever go up, but I was pregnant this spring and that pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. That pregnancy was not a good pregnancy though. I was very, very sick a lot of the time. So I adopted a lot of bad habits. So now I'm working on replacing and improving those habits. I'm working on exercising and eating better and sleeping. That's the one that I've been struggling with. Um, one bad habit that I have is I start working again when my son goes to sleep and lately what that does is it gets me to the point where like I can't fall asleep when I try to go to bed and I almost never have issues falling asleep. It's just lately that's been a thing. So I have to stop working at night and my other bad habit is I wake up and then I look at my phone because I check the notifications and then half an hour goes by and I've done nothing but lay in bed and look at my phone. So just examples. When you develop good habits, it helps you to feel better. You can get better sleep, you feel better when you eat better, you feel better when you exercise. I can't think of other habits, but there's so many different habits out there that you can use to your benefit so that you feel like working more or so that you have more energy. Whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, look at how your habits can impact that. I recommend the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. I read that right around January and I want to reread it again because the first time I read it just to like understand it, but now I need to go back and actually implement what I was learning, but it was a fantastic book about habits. So those are my seven tips for full-time teacher, teacherpreneurs. If you have any questions or better yet, if you have any tips of your own, please share them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.